I'm now going to go back to the analogy of looking at uh, atoms and bonds looking like pill biller balls connected by a spring. So, <clears throat> okay, and the reason why we need to go back to this analogy is because it's going to help us to interpret IR spectra. And when you interpret IR spectra, you need to understand what the peaks in the spectrum are representing and why they're at the particular wave number and why they're at a particular frequency, why they're at a particular intensity of absorption. And that's this analogy right here is going to help us do that. Okay. So recall if you've had physics before, do you recall a law called Hooke's law? You recall that Hooke's law is where it's looking at the frequency of a spring, uh, how it oscillates. Okay, so that's what we're representing here. Our atoms aren't connected together by a spring, so we're going to use Hooke's law to kind of analyze the frequency. Now, the frequency is really important because when we look at an NMR spectrum. Those are inverse wave numbers, which can be correlated to frequency, right? So we have high frequency over here, low frequency over here. So that would be high energy and low energy over here. And we're so we're going to use Hooke's law to help us understand that. Okay. So what is Hooke's law? Well, a the frequency of a spring can be described using this equation where we take the square root of k and k is the spring constant and the spring constant is how stiff the spring is and then we will divide that by m which represents the mass of the balls attached okay now that's a very simple model for a spring, okay, connected to uh, heavy objects on either end of the springs. Okay, really, really simple. Now, now, looking at panel A, each ball there represents is representing a carbon atom, okay, and what we can see with respect to time, that is the frequency. At which it oscillates, okay, represented there. Now, what happens if we take one of the carbon atoms and replace them with a hydrogen atom? So now the green atoms there is a hydrogen. Look at what happens to the frequency, it increases in vibrational energy. So if we bring this back to this little chart here, look at this. If we have a carbon carbon stretch, where would we expect that to be? Around in the blue region. But what if we had a carbon hydrogen stretch? Where would we expect that? We'd expect it in this pink region. So it's higher frequency. Whoops, wrong button there. So that's one, inter that's, that's that point right there. When you have a large atom and a smaller atom, it's going to have a higher vibrational frequency. Now that can be explained using this equation here, because look at what M is. If M gets smaller because you're going from a carbon atom, which is really heavy, to a light atom, such as hydrogen, do you see how the denominator is going to get smaller? And if, that, if the denominator gets smaller, that means the frequency is going to get larger. Okay. 
now let's look at an example where we address the spring constant and the spring constant is analogous or is how stiff the spring is and so when you see this little panel right here we still have a carbon atom and still have the hydrogen atom but the frequency has increased because what has what has happened here do you see how thick the spring looks it's gotten uh we're trying to uh, show that the spring's getting stiffer so if the spring is getting stiffer then that means the k constant is getting larger and if the k constant gets larger, then what happens to the frequency of the spring? It goes up. So for example, what we would see, let's, I believe, yeah, we'll look at it at this next slide here. So we're going to take this concept right here, okay, about the stiffness of the spring, and share it with this little point right here. Okay? We're going to ignore this little piece right here because we already discussed that in a previous video. So what we see here is if we have a carbon hydrogen stretch when the carbon is sp3 hybridized. So that would look something like this, where we'd have a carbon like that, and then we would have, well, that, let's, that's not going to work out so well. So let's go to my whiteboard okay and then we will take this and just do a little screenshot on it okay okay so what we have here is let's look at the sp3 so we have a carbon hydrogen stretch which absorbs at 3000 inverse wave centimeters but an sp3 would look like that okay and i'm going to extend out this bond just to prove a point now if we look at a sp2 hydrogen Let's see here. Well, let's just look at it this way. Draw our groups there. So let's focus our attention here. What I'm trying to imply here is do you see that the sp3 carbon hydrogen bond is really long, whereas the sp2 carbon right here when you have a hydrogen carbon bond on an sp2 hybridized carbon that bond right there is shorter and when that so that bond is shorter which means it's stronger or analogous to a stiffer spring so we would see that hey that is going to be absorbed at a higher frequency a higher energy and then if we look at a sp hybridized okay r so we're looking at an sp hybridized do you see the bond length difference long short shorter and because this bond is shorter it's stronger it's a stiffer spring and it's going to re going to um, absorb at a higher frequency photon. Okay, so that's what that stiffness of the spring is talking about. Okay. Now the next thing is why are some peaks really really tall, and some are really short. Okay, so we can see this one right here versus this one right here. The amplitude is different. One's really intense, one is not. Okay, 
So it has to do with quantum mechanics, and I don't want to delve into that too much, other than I'll just discuss with you the basics. Okay? So if you see this molecule right here, this alkene, and we are focusing our attention on this carbon-carbon double bond stretch, which we can see is right here. Okay. Now we see, now take another alkene, so I'm going to go to the next slide. We have a carbon-carbon double bond stretch right there, but look, it's missing. Why is that carbon-carbon stretch not there? There's a difference in amplitude. Actually, it's still there. It's just really, really tiny in comparison to that guy. They're both alkenes, but why is one more intense than the other? And the answer to that is a, a difficult question to answer because there's a lot of quantum mechanics involved. But here's the simple answer. So let's look at the dip. So look at that guy compared to this guy. Uh, there. Okay. Do you see how this molecule right here has a little bit more symmetry? So if I take this double bond and like split it in half, this side and that side of the double bond kind of look the same. Whereas this molecule here, if I split it down the alkene, this side of the alkene and this side of the alkene look drastically different. When there is a larger difference, that is when you are going to get, or when there's it's not symmetrical, you're going to have a more intense peak. This one's more symmetrical, smaller peak, or it's really not, or it could not even show up. Okay. Here's another example, looking at the carbonyl stretch right here. Why are carbonyl stretches so intense? Well, because that carbonyl is polarized. More polarized a bond is, the more intense of a peak you will get. So we can see if we just looked at this carbon and that oxygen there, the oxygen atom is more electronegative, so the electron density is polarized towards the oxygen. And because it's so polarized, we have a nice and intense peak. Now this, peak, this stretch right here, what I'm looking at is the stretch between the oxygen and the hydrogen. So I'm showing you that bond right there, that stretch. Now that is very polarized as well, right? It's polarized much to that way right there. And because it's so polarized, this stretch right there is very intense. And lo and behold, it is this whole thing right there. Do you see how intense it goes down? So we're at this slide, we're just talking about intensity. Why is it so broad? We will cover in another video. But the reason why it's so intense is because of how polarized that bond is. All right, so in the next video, we're going to go through a lot of IR spectra to uh, look at each different type of stretch. So we're going to look at OH stretches, N8 stretches, double bonds, triple bonds, and all that stuff like I talked about in a previous video. Okay.